So for today, we are playing Last Word Shadow. Um, pretty strong deck right now in the meta. Second only to uh, Mysteria Rune, of course. Extremely fun deck, and I, th I think it's pretty fun. At least maybe you don't like playing against it, which is understandable because it is the second strongest deck. It does have a lot of powerful cards that can make you feel very sad to play against. But oh well. That, here we are, I guess. Um, it's a very difficult deck to play, in my opinion at least. If you're a better player than me, you'll probably find it much easier than I do, but I think it's hard, so... I am going to... Uh, I'm still not 100% on like my, my ability to play this deck yet, but... So this is not going to be a, a guide as much as it is going to be just a showcase of me playing the deck, what I'm thinking about, and maybe that will help you uh, learn how the deck works, and then give you some ideas to play it when you play yourself. Uh, it's definitely a very strong deck, so uh, if you're trying to climb, I, this is one of the decks I would recommend. It has a lot of powerful, powerful cards. It has the Poisoned Apple of Revival, which is a ridiculous card that multiplies your Dark Atlases. Uh, Dark Atlas, of course, Storms for 5 is a recurring storm, so if your opponent doesn't have specific answers like Odin, Transforms, or Banishes, uh, and then they will just die to Dark Atlas. Yeah, that's. And then we have, of course, the old good old Last Words package from uh, Asvolt with uh, Eastern Dead and Abyssal Colonel. Most Abyssal Colonel may have been nerfed, but with Dark Atlas now to help out with your damage, this deck definitely does output enough damage. Um, Hellfire Strike in particular is here to help answer the Mysteria board because, well, you have to have an answer for Mysteria if you want to be able to play in this meta. Uh, and then, of course, Two for Grace is just a very generally very solid, very, very solid card. Uh, we run, unlike maybe in Asvolt, we have a lot of neutrals in this deck because uh, Dark Atlas is built around neutrals partially. So yeah, that's the how, that's how the list. Um, I'm running the one of Void Knight here just as a test, just trying it out. You can search for last words, right? So that's the job. Um, this list isn't completely original. I did adapt it a little bit and by that I mean I just put in one Void Knight but the original list is by Japanese player and Shadow main uh, Jasun who's I think just uploaded a video for this deck uh, today so I will link that video in the description feel free to check it out he's definitely a for more uh, advanced gameplay <laughs> footage even if you don't understand the Japanese I guess you can at least watch him play it it's definitely a lot better than I am so that's it for the preamble let's move on to the games so our first match will be the mirror going second. I don't know why I started with the mirror because the mirror is insanely difficult to play but uh, here we are. So um, for the mulligan I just keep Dark Atlas. Uh, Two Fault Grace is also worth keeping in my opinion. Um, you can consider keeping the Exhumer. I, is that what her name? Evil Exhumer? You know the one, that, that one. Yeah, Evil Exhumer. You can consider keeping her as well. Especially if going second, but mainly I like to find Alice and Two Fold Grace, so that's what I do. So I pick up the Alice and I just go ahead and crystallize her early. She's helpful for getting a last word since she is basically two last words for the pack for the cost of two PP, which is very efficient. And then uh, I want to play the Exhumer next turn, so I'm just gonna pop down the S Vault here. I take a bit of damage, but this deck has a surprising amount of healing and as a mirror we are fairly familiar with what they can and can't do as well, so should be fine. So we pull out the Alice here which will allow us to help us uh, clear their board on this turn. So we pop down the Exhumer, pull out the Aldous. Hopefully we can get an Angel of War here to uh, help clear their board. And luckily we do. So we can use it to uh, clear out their board. Um, here there is an option between using Ruler and Night Terrors on the... whatever you want to clear. I went with the uh, I went with the egg, the the, 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 the the ruler this time. I think ruler was probably slightly better there in my opinion, but you know I could be wrong. It helped to clear the, oppo the opponent's board, so that was probably the right play. I think. Anyway. So they have the exhumer as well, and you can look at their last words. They are at five right now, so they are not doing super well on their last words, but like. I mean, we're probably doing better because we have Alice, we're at 6. So they put on the Exhumer here, we're gonna want to clear that. Unfortunately, we mill the Twofold Grace here. I popped on a Patchwork Pup, uh, just to get rid of their last words to slow them down, since uh, I don't see a very convincing lethal in my hand. 
And it's a bit of a slow turn here as I don't have a lot of cards I want to spend from my hand. I want to leave my board empty to slow down their last words as well. And there's the patchwork pop. Um, right now we are at 9 last words so once this amulet pops we will be going face with it so it's time to start hitting them with Dark Alice. Um, so yeah, the Exhumer will summon out 2 neutrals for you. Ruler? The main body of Ruler is quite tempting to play but the Accelerate will generally be much more helpful in, especially in the late game. So I recommend saving it for the Accelerate more often. And then here we can pop the dog and make sure we, we trade, kill off our Alice first so the dog won't transform our Alice. And then we put down the Colonel here to prepare to kill them next turn. Because we are at 10, they are at... They are still at 9, so... Without all that, put them at 10, I guess. So they, they can like, get put out instant dead here if they want, but... They just end up crystallizing this. Um, Important to talk about, in the, especially in the mirror with Colonel, is that what... Normally Colonel is just like, oh, you just storm for 4, right? But in the mirror, he's extremely valuable because putting him on the board like this, as you can see here... In the moment where I play Eastern Dead, as you can see, when you put the Colonel on board, you will summon the Colonel when your opponent plays Eastern Dead, which will help you uh, sort of mess with their lethal patterns. But fortunately for me, I have a guaranteed lethal here with Poison Apple on both the Colonel and the Alice. So, um, yeah, if they hit the if they hit the Alice here, I just wouldn't need to play the uh. Night Terrors on the Alice. And then I would... Um, this Alice can go face, of course. Uh, I forgot that this Alice came out. I actually played the, the Eastern Dead before the Alice even swung. Which was a misplay. So yeah, um, <laughs> played the Alice there. But it's still lethal with uh, Colonel Evo and Alice and my opponent concedes here. So that's it for this game. A bit awkwardly played, I think. But hopefully the future ones are better. <laughs> So our next game, we are going first against blood. Um, there is of course the under 10 blood that is uh, introduced in this expansion, but I feel like more often than not, uh, blood is playing aggro right now, because aggro is probably the most playable blood deck right now. Um, we will, against the aggro deck, we want to match the aggro so we can kill them before they can kill us. So I pop down the uh, patchwork pop here to get ready to hit face. Two Grace here with the Amaterasu will block this off from trading into my pup, so allowing me to go face here and just uh, play, take a more aggressive approach. Um, they trade their Blitzer here, which unfortunately for me, eh, it's fine. They take a bunch of damage from their own Blitzer. I lose my board here, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal here. All this into Night Terrors will help me to draw while clearing their board, which is very efficient. And then um, here they play the Demonic Drummer, which, uh, I mean, it's HP neutral for them, which I guess is fine. And here comes the uh, Tsukiyomi. Uh, we just, nothing much to do here, so we just put on the Alice as well, will help reduce the countdown on the Alice. I believe at this point in time, I wasn't running Void Knight in the list, so you won't see any Void Knight here, I think. So here they are uh, really paying themselves a lot, which hopefully we can take advantage of. And they evolve the um, demonic drummer here to trade, I guess. I wonder if evolving the one that goes face might have been better for them, but oh well. So we have Hellfire Strike here, we can clear the entire board, so that's fine for us. Um, Alice comes out, so I'm going to get rid of her and put her back in the crystallize. Uh, that puts my last words at 6. With this, it'll be 7. So if I kick it, get two of my followers destroyed and then pop out the Alice after that I will have uh, 10 last words from the Alice so it's really fine here they put themselves in uh, vengeance unfortunately and then evolve the Maron here but thanks to uh, I guess thanks to my last words being so fast I actually have to end up having lethal this turn so uh, is that here evolve the Eastern that which will put and then um, I believe Trade it off, and that will put me at 8 last words. Trade off the uh, Eastern Dead here, and then Ruler of the Necropolis here will get my last words 10 while summoning out uh, Neutral so that I can pop out the uh, Alice, and then Alice goes space for Lethal. So, yeah, pretty clean Lethal uh, next game. 
Uh, our next game is against Dragon, and we are going second. Dragon, of course, as usual, has two different decks. You have the ramp one, and you have the uh, buff. Hopefully, it's... Uh, actually, honestly, I don't know which one's worse for this deck. I don't generally like playing against Dragon, but oh well, here we are, so I guess it's time to play. Fortunately, we don't open the uh, Dark Atlas, and here they play Coach Joe, which tells us this is in fact buff. So now we have to expect play with buff in mind. Um, we can lethal. Buff has like Drazael, other than that, uh, it's then that threatens them pretty hard. Uh, unlike buff. Unlike uh, Ramp, Ramp has the uh, static, sorry, uh, the Dormant Dragon which they can put on board and then do block is then dead. But uh, Buff doesn't have that so hopefully if we survive the late game and get our condition online we should be able to win this fairly convincingly. And here they play the Grand Slam so obviously the hand's not super good. Um, we can clear that so we're gonna go ahead and clear it. Uh, clearing our Amaterasu also helps us with our last condition as it will summon the Skiomi on turn 5. So here they uh, put, played the striker which gave me a high attack for a moment but it doesn't evolve yet so we are fine there. So it's our evil turn and we're of course going to evolve the Exhumer very efficient for last words. It's 2p for 3 last words which is extremely extremely efficient. It also summons them out of your deck which will thin your deck out and help you find your key cards faster. And here I pull out the skill me early with my own spell because well I don't really have anything better to do with my hand. And the Tsukiyomi will... And as you can see, um, right now we have Amaterasu's effect on our leader, so cling. Hang the Tsukiyomi out will cause the Tsukiyomi to get the effect as well. Which uh, you might think is not super e effective since uh, the Tsukiyomi can't start here anyway, but I mean it's one turn earlier, so it's fine. Um, against buff, Hellfire Strike is not that useful because their followers have so much health that uh, it doesn't help clearing them, so we're gonna fuse it into the Grave Void Knight there to hopefully draw our key cards. But unfortunately, we just drew Patchwork Park there, which is not super useful. So we're just going to uh, get our last words up and then Hellfire Strike to get rid of the dragon. Um, as you can see, our hand is quite bad right now. We don't really have a Stun Dead or uh, Alice. If you look at our last words, we're already at 8, which means we're more or less ready to go off. It's just that our hand is really shit right now. And meanwhile, they are having a good time with their hand over there. So here comes the uh, Amaterasu. Which I'm gonna use for draw here because... Oh, my hand is really actually just so bad. Um, we fuse off the... Fuse off the pub here, I guess, to uh, try to draw more cards. And we do find the Dark Alice there, which is very fortunate. So we're gonna use all this, and then we're gonna evolve all this to help clear that board. Um, we leave the Dion alive, which is maybe not super ideal, but I don't think it should matter that much. So out comes the Coral Spirit, thankfully they don't have enough evils, but then it comes to the Joe, which is more scary because, well, he does uh, deal damage, but uh, we do have a very, very easy lethal here, so it's fine. So um, we pop out two pounds here, and then uh, Eastern Dead will destroy the Joe while summoning out Dark Alice, and then we have two Poison Apples. Poison Apples, of course, extremely broken card. We can multiply out Dark Alice. It's 1 PP 5 damage, basically, which is kind of obscene. Uh, there's probably more convoluted lethals here, even if I didn't have that, but, well, I do have that, so we're just gonna go with that. Summon out two more uh, Alice's here, we'll finish them off for lethal. So yeah, that's it for this game. Let's move on to the next one. Um, so for this match, we are going first against Sword. If you're wondering why I have so many games today, it's just because I've been having fun playing this deck, so I played it a lot. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So with open 2 for Grace, which is very nice. Um, with 2 for Grace in hand and going first, I don't really see the need to keep the Exhumer. I would rather find Dark Alice, so we are gonna return her and hopefully find Dark Alice, which we don't find, unfortunately. Uh, of course, we just put on 2 for Grace. I like to pick Amaterasu unless I there's a pressing need for the rush from Tsukiyomi. It's just a personal preference, I don't think there's any... Like... Yeah, I just prefer it this way. There is an argument that picking Tsukiyomi first will help you ping more damage, which maybe if you are 1 damage off lethal at some point, it might be because you picked the Amaterasu and the Tsukiyomi, but I just prefer Amaterasu here, so yeah, pick Amaterasu. 
Um, unfortunately, our hand ain't looking too good, so we're just going to play that to draw. There is an argument for playing Grave Void Knight there to draw instead, but we are going to use uh, the pup. Unfortunately, here we do have a uh, neutral followers destroyed, so ruler will, ruler of the necropolis will in fact help us summon our followers should we choose to go that route. So we are taking a bit of damage, so we, from what they've played so far, we can be pretty sure they are playing rarely, which we should keep in mind. So uh, instead of playing ruler here, I decide I want to board lock them. Our, con our game plan is not doing so well without Dark Alice in our hand, so rather than going, uh, right, we might not be able to finish the game too quickly, so I decided to be safe, I should try to board lock them as much as possible, slow on their rally. If you slow on their rally, they can't really kill you unless they're running that one new 6 PP spell, which, <laughs> I mean, they're probably not running that, I would think. So, um, we're able to keep them still at rally 8, which is good for us. Meanwhile, our game plan is uh, slowly coming together, so here comes the uh, Necropolis ruler, who loves the Necropolis to help me draw. The hope is of course that this will draw me a uh, uh, Alice, which it doesn't. Very sad. So we accelerate the uh, Necropolis here just to draw more cards and we do find the Dark Alice here. So now that we have Dark Alice here, we are more or less ready to win the game. Because of that, I'm okay with clearing their board and letting them rally as much as they want. Now they're rally 8. And there's the Monica. The dashing Duelist. And that will recover their evil point for them. And they do evolve the Dashing Duelist there. Um, because they evolve the Dashing Duelist there, we actually have lethal this turn. You can see we are at last words destroyed 9. So um, we played the Apple on her just to give her a rush to trade in. And then we can play two Alice's, and then instant that. And this is a 20 damage lethal actually. But, um, even if I didn't draw that well, I think I would have gotten away with just passing turn for another turn and waiting for the kernel to naturally pop out of the amulet. But yeah, um, because we did that, we were able to win the game by bot locking them. So yeah, that's it for this game. Let's move on to the next one. So for our last game for today, we are of course playing against everyone's favorite deck, Mysteria Rune, and we're going first. Um, you can see this hand is pretty shit, which tossed the whole thing. Unfortunately, we don't draw one that's much better. So um, yeah, against Mysteria Rune, Mysteria Rune is possibly the only matchup I would actually recommend keeping Hellfire Strike against. Maybe Forest if you run into Forest, but I, I mean, are you gonna run into Forest? Probably not. But yeah, um, Hellfire Strike is very important against Mysteria just because uh, they go so wide with their boards. They want a way to answer it. And there's the uh, Wormist here. That's fine. We are just going to go on with our game. Unfortunately, we didn't get Angel of War out of the Exhumer. If we got Angel of War there, we could have went face with the Amaterasu, which would have been uh, better for us, but no such luck, right? There is the uh, Greya from them. Um, this one problem I have with Void Knight for searching for like Eastern Dead and Alice is that sometimes you just don't have cards that you want to use off. In this case, like, all my cards are pretty good. Anyway, I'm saving the shadows for Hellfire Strikes, so I guess that's fine. And there is their Miss Miranda into a uh, Bertrand. Probably put the Miranda behind a wall, and they have a Radiant White Worm as well. And another Miss Miranda. And there's the ward. So yeah, um, this is the reason why we keep Hellfire Strike. <laughs> this is why Hellfire Strike is for it's for when they do this shit. So uh, Atsukiyomi comes out here, which is nice. So does our Alice. Uh, trading into the White Worm, of course, will help us clear it with Hellfire Strike, and we evolve the Necropolis because our hand is pretty bad and we draw more cards. So Necropolis is good for that. It helps you draw cards. Uh, I'll cost trade off our Alice to prevent them from banishing it with the Mysterian Tome, I believe it's called, yep. And there's the Hannah, which is cool. Uh, fortunately for us, early Hannah is better than the late Hannah. It doesn't look like they have Ginger either, which 
we are very, very happy with us. Well, if we high roll us, we can't really stop them. Let's think about Mysterio, right? You can see our last one is already at 9. Dark Evans is already ready to start running in their face, assuming that I have enough neutrals, which I do here, so I believe I do go for it. Yep. Oh no, I don't because uh, Hamdan is 3, so uh, this sets up for uh, Dark Atlas to come out next turn. So they pull out the Grey Eye here, it's very good for helping them save Evil Point, which will help them use it for stuff like uh, Amaryllis, which is annoying. And then the Mysterian Circle will give them a ward. Oh, we have Amaterasu here, unfortunately not Fiomi here, but eh, it's fine. So we have the Void Knight here. We don't really have any other cards to play here, so we just pop down the Void Knight. There's an argument for fusing one of the Knight Terrors or something into the Void Knight, but I just went the Void Knight. Uh, here there is, of course, a chance to not be able to clear the Gria, which might help them run away with the game, though to be safe, I am gonna trade my Dark Alice off. Of course, I do miss the 5 damage, but I mean, better to be safe than sorry, right? Fortunately, we pick up the Dark Alice here, so we have a very clean uh, 21 damage lethal next turn, assuming we are not dead. And we are not dead because uh, I guess they didn't high roll me hard enough. And they pull out the Midello, I guess they are playing Midello here. There's their Ginger. And their Crushing Rain. Fate's hand to help them draw more cards, and there's the Scorching Curse to kill them off. Unfortunately for them, they are still within death range. They didn't even evolve the Ginger. But yeah, they're super dead, so yeah, that's it for this game. You can of course win against Mysteria if they don't Omega high roll. Uh, yeah, if they high roll, you're still dead. That's it for this game, and for the games I have for you for last words, so yeah, let's move on to some closing thoughts while Alice pummels their face. You know? Actually, I think they concede. So I don't get to do that. Yep, there it is. So yeah, that's it for this game. So that's all the games I have for you today. A lot more than usual, I think, but hopefully it gave you some idea of how this deck works. Uh, help you see what I'm doing right, and if you see things I'm doing wrong, helps you give you an idea of how you can play better than me. Um, because you can definitely play better than me. I'm not that good. Um, anyway, uh, this deck takes a lot of practice, so I'm still trying to get better. I think it's a really fun deck so I really want to get good at playing this deck. Uh, yeah, if you are at a decent skill level you can definitely climb with this deck. It's an extremely strong deck as you can see as you saw in the games it has some isn't that is <laughs> extremely strong. It has a decent early game, decent amount of healing as well surprisingly with the uh, all this. And Dark Alice is just ridiculous. Colonel is great for uh, disrupting your opponent's plans and so is Patchwork Pup. It has a lot of draw power as well. Although maybe not as much as I expected, but anyway, uh, yeah, overall I think the deck is extremely strong, so definitely if you're interested in Last Word Shadow, feel free to give it a shot. There is a temporary deck for it as well, so it's very, well, it's, I wouldn't say it's cheap to build, but it's like not as expensive to build it. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I have decided that I will be taking a break until next year, so yeah, um, you have you'll you'll never see another video from me again until next year. Good for you, I guess. Um. So uh, yeah. Um. That's it for today's video. I'll see you next year. Bye bye.